ladies and gentlemen, I'm Victor yes, Brooks. Yes. Victor Brooks Show, you know. Uh, thank you all. Every Saturday and Sunday, you know how we do. We come at you at 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock, Saturday and Sunday, for this Quarantine Live series. And you know I always start off here with a single screen because there's some things I always want to say when I get on here. First of all, thanking my positivity, our positivity posse. Uh, all around the world. Every weekend, y'all take your time and you come in and rap to us or you come in to, to just support, to, to get, like I like to say, to get some of this positivity on you, you know? Like I always say, just go take a bath in positivity, take a shower in it, scuba dive in it, you know? Just get emerged in positivity. And when you come out, sprinkle it on somebody else, y'all. That's all we're trying to do. You know, I know, like I say before, we're not CNN or any of the big boys, but in our own way, we're spreading positivity to as many as we can, you know? And I, I always like to remind that just because we have a, 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 a moniker of positivity for our show, in no way does it try to ignore or negate the fact that there's some serious stuff going on out here in the world right now. There's a lot of negativity in the world, you know? Actually, like I like to say, we have two viruses going on. You know, we have, uh, of course, the coronavirus that kind of put us in, you know, had us pause our, our whole life for a while and still in a lot of ways, you know. <clears throat> and we also have that, that virus racism that uh, is generational, you know, two viruses that, uh, that, that's coming at us at this point in time in life right now. But when we pull away and do this positivity posse, y'all, we're just trying to take a moment out of these 24 hours. To share stories, you know, to, to bring people on who you definitely know and some you may not know, but you hear their journey, you hear their stories, and it's all, whether it's in ups and downs, whatever they're comfortable talking about, uh, it always has that, that blanket of positivity that we're going to leave you with, you know? I remember when Clifton Davis came by and he talked about his ups yeah. and downs, you know, in life and as a songwriter, and then that's my mom days all the way up through here. And he was very real when we had Larry Dotson of Barquets came on and said his thing, you know, and, and, and on and on. Sister Melba Moore last weekend, so many of the people who, who opened up about what's on their heart, you know? And then in their beautiful personal way, they were able to lift us with a positive and take us, you know, on through the next week, you know? And I always like to give it up to my doctors, our nurses, our EMT drivers, our grocery store workers, our sanitation workers, our postal workers, uh, delivery people, truck drivers, you know, our positive law enforcement people there, because we got some negative ones, you know, that's very evident. But our positive law enforcement, keep doing what you're doing, you know. And uh, I want to always thank the ones who are trying to keep our life as, 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 as comfortable as it can be. Because in them days when we get out and go to the store, we get those grocery store workers. Thank you all so much. And climbing today, I want to give my shout out to the protesters. Keep protesting, y'all. Keep on your mind. Keep letting us know what you're thinking about. Be angry. It's okay. Be confused. It's okay. Have something that you want to say, say it. And specifically our artists, hey, y'all, keep painting about it. Keep writing a song about it. Keep making a poem about it. You dig art all through history. Whenever there was a, a, a revolution or, or, or outside in our day-to-day -day lives, but whenever there was something heavy to say in this world, art was there. That prose songs that took us through we had protest films and documentaries that took us through, you dig? We need you. And I always specifically talk about our now generation. Come on, y'all. Get this on your heart. My generation, let's keep that. Let's let this new generation know that they can come and talk to us. They can come and rap to us because if they don't rap to us, they're going to rap to somebody, you know? And, and we have to be open to hear what they have to say, to, 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 to let them express themselves like they need to express themselves. And then hopefully they'll leave the gate open for us so that we can pass on our, our, our wisdom. We can pass on uh, uh, non-judgmentally the way that we can say, hey, let's try it this way. You dig? It's about building that bridge, y'all. And uh, 
once again, that's all we're doing here on the Positivity Posse. And today, ladies and gentlemen, you know, hey man, I, I, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, very excited, and I'm also very excited to, to, to welcome our guest for today. And before this brother comes on screen, I just want to kind of tell you, uh, 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 remind some and educate us. We're talking about Frost, aka OG Kid Frost, considered by yo, yo. to be the godfather of Chicano rap. Also, OG Kid Frost is a native of East LA, Los Angeles, California. He was the first Mexican Latin rapper signed to Easy es label Ruthless Records. Also, the 1990 Billboard Music winner for Latino Artist of the Year. Multi gold and platinum selling artist, one of the most notable of his songs, one of my favorites, No Sunshine, from that classic uh, yeah. American Me. Also, the renowned a uh, festival de musical that many of us know in France, that huge music festival. Brother Kid Frost closed the show after his predecessors, Celine Dion, Peebo Bryson, George Clinton, and many other legends of his parts. <laughs> Brother Frost took it home at the end of that show at Festival de Musical in France. Also, over 77,000 people enjoyed OG Kid Frost's performance at the LA Sports Arena. Also, the only Latin rapper of Ice Cube classic movie soundtrack, Friday. <laughs> His music is also included in the incredibly successful movie, The Crow, featuring Brandon Lee. His album, Smile Now, Die Later, on Ruthless, sold almost a half million copies from the get-go, and then just bulleted at that. Much respect, much thanks for you taking Man. the time today, brother. Let's bring Brother Frost onto the camera, y'all. Is he there? Man, what can I say after that interview? There he is. Right there? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice no, no, I, don't, I, I definitely ain't in, in the era and time of uh, tooting my, my horn. Uh, man, I was really moved by what you were saying, man, about about you know the, the the youth out there man this is this is their time and and their generation right now to make these changes that were long 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 overdue i mean how how long could we be going through these trials and tribulations still of uh oppressed youth man and these kids I mean, like you said, as long as they're doing the right thing, and this this don't have nothing to do with looting, man. Don't go out there and tear your buildings down. Don't go out there and take from from the next man because then that ladder and that plateau that you're trying to build yourself up to be heard, man. It, it's they're gonna throw they're gonna throw a lot of other things in your way, man. As long as you're out there and you got you got something to say and a voice. Man, use that voice, man, to make these these changes. Another way that you're the only way you're gonna make make these real real changes in, in in society and in life is if we vote these people out of office and get and vote in our people that we need to go in and actually make these abrupt changes, man. It's it's hard to be. When I was telling you about being like we we're saying about being positive, you know, it's hard to be totally positive in a yeah. negative environment when your environment around you reflects a lot of negativity it's kind of hard for the youth and these young these young kids out there but man these young kids are just calling out because i mean Come on now. it's time for change it's time to abruptly make make change one thing that we really really need to do is we need to go look in law enforcement in the way that they deal with minorities we're not just going to say you know, we're gonna go to all life. Every everybody with a heartbeat in their chest matters. Everybody's life matters. That's every walk of life, every denomination, whether where you're from, it don't it don't matter. If if you're from East LA, if you're from Watts, if you're from Inglewood, if you're from if you're from the 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 wards in Texas, second ward, fifth ward, it don't it don't matter. If you're in the Nolia, Nolia out there if you're in homestead florida and and in the decaters and all that out there then everybody's life matters and now because of social media man you gotta understand that kid frost and these ice cubes and ice teas and these krs ones and these bdps and these these big 
Daddy Kane's and the blueprints of, of hip hop. If if you go back into the early eras uh, eras of hip hop, hip hop was more telling, man, and, and more giving you the in depth of what was going on of the rigors in these different hoods and these different neighborhoods and barrios and all that. And black and brown have been in that struggle together for since the origin of it and the beginning of it. So. And and you know what you know what uh, brother Frost man I, I I just can't once again I, I I thank you man for taking your time to come and talk to our positivity posse and one thing with our audience here it's it's multi generational it's multicultural it's it's you know it's it's actually from different it's all over the world people who tune in and we have a lot of artists that that join us too and to hear that you was, give your message that's what gives brother, us the art the brother that's what gives us the art of it you know what I'm yeah. saying. That's Diverse it. cultures is what's Diverse, made man. our country great. You know what I mean? And being made better, Brother Frost, you know, I know we have a delay, but I, I know that one of my first, and I, I'm going to start, I always like to start from my personal thing, because, you know, it, I have to, you know, be real about what I feel first and then know the other people. But my first uh, remembrance of hearing the OG Kid Frost and feeling your, I'm going to say your campaign back in the day, brother, was, of course, my anthem. I loved your anthem. One of my favorites of your anthems, Lalasa. And when I saw this and we heard this and this came on the scene, uh, knowing that you joined forces with, as you say, the black and brown hip hop movement of Easy e and, and Ice-T, you've been in this multicultural development movement, brother, from the beginning, right? I mean, this is your, this has I been mean, your campaign. You know, you know, Victor, I've been in this since a kid. You got to understand, both, both of my parents were in the military, so I grew up on military bases pretty much my my whole life from five year old from schooling all the way way up so i didn't i wasn't really taught about you know segregating myself or or he's black he's brown we never really did that and i started in from baseball leagues all the way up and when i'm telling you i lived around the world i i, I lived in panama and guam <laughs> I lived all on military bases all over the United States um, and then joined the military myself. So I've always never really had an, that ounce of, of uh, race gotcha. tension or, or right. you know, biased or he's black, he's brown, he's white, he's yellow, he's we never, we never there really had that. And you, you're one color in the army, man. And you learn that on the military base, right, right off the bat. That's the color of the the uniform, and that's green. So that's green. Okay. I always had that mentality, bro. Always. You know what, brother Frost? You mentioned about you growing up. Uh, who were some of you? What What was life like for Frost growing up? Was there music all in your house, man? Or who were some of the influences mm -hmm. you remember growing yes. up? Yes. Yes, I was very blessed to be around. <clears throat> a musical house and I was very blessed to be introduced to music like I said my, uh, we would go from uh, Mexican ranchero music from Miguel Acieves Mejia wow. in the house <laughs> all the way to a Willie Bobo record Willie Bobo. So, man, we had, there was just so much music yeah. so much music and I mean I, I could remember my mom and dad putting you know Little Anthony and the Imperials album on from front to back on the yeah. on, a, on a thirty-three and, on a thirty-three and the third plane and <laughs> learning these songs and singing them at the top of my lungs in the house and they go from a Spanish album to to soul and to a you know a Diane Warwick album to a yeah. and there was just so much diverse culture in the house because my parents had so much and he had one of those little uh, real to reels in the house and they had brought back one of the reels actually from from vietnam and that thing would play at our house and it man wow. i i would i would hear everything from the fifth dimension to <laughs> temptations to right. it was just just a reel of just continuous music just played like and those songs would 
but play at our parties and our backyard gatherings with the family and the barbecues and all that. So I've always been in this this music always ever yeah. since as far as back as I can remember, man, standing on a milk crate box singing Beatles songs. You know, I wanna ah. I wanna hold whole hand and you know, I would I couldn't even enunciate the words right and they would clown <laughs> and laughing because they put a big old wig on me. And I'm gonna have to pull out some of those archives. Yeah, of, man, we got it. Yeah, they, they <laughs> make everybody it. laugh so they can see that man. That but you see, that's was, that whole that's that whole gumbo of of that sound you grew up with. You know that that we menudo, fell in love. Menudo gumbo. There you go, right? Grits. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's right, man. That's right. And you know what I think? And and so it was just natural for you then. Where did you start the whole pop locking uh, thing? Because that, in, being in, in California, I know pop lock is, I mean, th that's what, you well, know, that's huge, brother. Actually, actually, this, all this came first, all the, the locking first. We, really? um, I started, I started doing the dancing stuff um, on the military base, actually, during my teen years at White Sands Missile Range, New Mexico. We were stationed just right outside of Las Cruces on a military installation there. And in White Sands, we had a youth activity center and they used to come and have uh, like young GIs who were wanting to be in that DJ thing. Right. And I remember Al Perkins uh, was one of the DJs that they brought in there. And um, I, I just, Man, just the songs and the sound that they would bring from the East Coast, you know, and we're playing these records in <clears throat> fourth and fifth grade, and I'm hearing these songs. I don't want to bump no more. <laughs> but I'm big bad woman. Right, right. All the songs, you know Joe what I mean? Tex, and right. Joe Tex and all these records that now I'm hearing the emergence of these songs coming in on that level you know what i mean the oj's yeah. and stuff like that and we would have these like these youth teen dances at the non-commissioners officers club at the nco club and everybody would be in there we would be we thought we were little lockers <laughs> like we would jump and jump on the ground and, and that's how it all started and then once that identity came and then man who wasn't glued to soul train on saturday right. morning man and when it would come on man and see don and them and then that's when you see the robot. And remember, that was pretty really that oh, Michael Jackson style yeah. of popping. Like right, everybody. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we're, we're like this with our eyes this big watching. You know right. what I mean? And I'm not knowing that. I'm, I'm thinking, man, if people that now probably would have seen me as a kid watching that, you know what I mean, and seeing that, they just say, well, what is this little Mexican kid? <laughs> But on the army base, like I told you, man, there's no color lines like that. So you gotcha, don't. Man. Gotcha, you don't man. Know that's that, right. You know, but see, okay, mind. so it started there on the military. Basketball with the homies. Everybody's, like I said, diverse cultures. <clears throat> My best friend yeah. was from Brooklyn, New York. His name was okay. Sloan. My best friend, Eddie Sloan. His, right. his parents were stationed and he lived like four houses down. Yeah. And man, that's why I learned my prowess to play baseball, basketball, uh, going on a court, but no color lines. We were just out there. There you go. There you go. Yeah. You know yeah. what? And, and, and you know, so it started. I'm just, I, I thank you for, for taking the time to go chronologically with your experience, brother, because to me, it's phenomenal. And, and with, the, with the military uh, life, and then with the pop, lock, pop locking started there. Did, moving from the military base back to LA, was that like a direct process? Did you did you stop over? Well, did you see the whole? 20, well, how this happened, Victor, was after 22 years of my pop, of my stepdad being in the military, his retirement came right when I turned 16 years old, and we left we left the base. But every summer. See, this is the thing. Every summer, my parents would send me back to, on a, on a military, it's called an IHOP. And okay. you get in a C-130 from wherever you base your station at, and they would fly me into L.A. And my grandparents would pick me up, and I would spend my summers in East L.A., right there on Whittier and Paramount in uh, Pico Rivera and off of Whittier Boulevard. 
And so at 16, I get put in this environment now and I'm seeing tattoos and muscle t-shirts, low riders, chain steering wheels. Now I'm really in that mix. So I'm grabbing the cultura, which is our, our Mexican and our diverse culture, and I'm taking pieces and inserts and pieces of that now with the Pete Winfield, 18 with a bullet, and the oldies and the more of the doo-wop stuff. And I'm merging that now with that lifestyle, taking that, these songs and these back to the base. So immediately, as soon as they seen that style, then, man, I was, I would, everything, you know, as a kid, when you're 15, 16, you grab onto, like, you're like a wet sponge grabbing everything you see. So I remember even in the earlier stages of my parents making us duck in the back seat of the car when they would pull that right down Whittier. They didn't want us, see, us to see the cholos and the, the gangsters and the, Yes. The shooters, they didn't want us to see that, but you know, we're kids, or I got one eye on me, everything. I'm like, I'm just a <laughs> exactly, go back, army, go back to the military base, and uh -huh. I would get in a little bit of troubles and spats and stuff because I was the one that put the bandana on, just like the homies that I seen in LA, and I would take it back to the and they'd call me in the office, come in, Melina, come in here. They use your last name on the military bases and military academy. They need to come in here. Come in here. Uh, and they knew what was going on in the streets a little bit in, in, in these cities and stuff. So they would pull me in the office, ask me to take it off. Don't do that. And as soon as I, I would have it in my back pocket and hung it <laughs> out of my back pocket, a rag, not even knowing that I'm hanging a rag out of my pocket. Like, no, right. no sense of what I'm doing. And of course, I would troll over right. You know, just like the shoulders okay. were right on the wall, okay. and I would go and go on the military base and go in the bathroom at, on, at the movie theater or the gym and write and write El Speedy Loco on the wall, and then come back. And they first one they would call me, come in here, me. <laughs> hand me a hand me an alcohol and a sponge thing, and hey, you want to take it off. <laughs> Your Picasso. You want to go take your Picasso off the bathroom wall over there? We know it's you. Like, uh. <laughs> you say, hey, you got me. So you come back into, so now you're coming in. You're, you're, let's, let's go when you, when you finally settled back home in L.A., right? So now yeah. you're home. You've had your military uh, life, the, uh, the, the, the whole, you know, out-the-box thinking of the world, the whole everything, the music that you mentioned. Now... Uh, Brother Molina is coming back to L.A. Did my the, parents, the pop locking keep going? How did the, yes, did, was there a stopping? Yeah. What happened? It then, really brother? started then. It really started then. All right, so here's how the whole pop locking really, really, and me knowing what I was going to do getting right. into this, this, this game. So my parents retire. They get a house and just upside uh, Nogales, up in West Covina, but it's the hill of Nogales High School off of Nogales in the 60 freeway. So I'm 16 years old, like I said. Now, now mind you, after military academy and me coming back, I got caught up immediately in the streets and I didn't go back to school. Um, I met Ice T. All right, so here's before I get in that to the pop, pop yeah. locking. Like I said, my parents buy a house in West Covina. Right. I meet, I meet this pop locker that moved down from San Francisco, and he was dope. His name was Ruckin McKinley. They used to call him Mean Mr. Ling. And Mean Mr. Ling used to, he was a dude that could lean all the way like this, almost <laughs> falling over. You couldn't understand. He leaned through that. And, he had a gimmick, though. He would come dressed like an old lady with an old lady thing with a cane, with a, and he'd come in there shaking like that. And then all of a sudden, he'd just start vibrating and shaking all his clothes off. And he was bad. I mean, this dude was, he had the, I mean, he had pop locking down to the science. So I started, I started giving a lot of the stuff that Ruckin was doing. And Ruckin was, I mean, he was like, People would come to the gymnasiums to see him pop from everywhere. Rucky McKinley was, he was it, like, in that round. 
This was way before I met Boogaloo Strip and oh. got into the LA Fancy Dancers themselves because I was in one of the biggest pop lock crews in LA of the origin of it, and that was the LA Fancy Dancers, started by Michael Chambers, Boogaloo Strip. You know, wow. was a, right, was a, right. Break, was a real good friend of mine. He used to come to my grandma's house in Pico, and he was from Wilmington, and he had a brother who was actually a gang member from the Crips who mm -hmm. actually was one of the first ones and he would put lighter fluid in his mouth and they would come out and bust these crazy, you know, the, you know, the gangsters that pop block back then in that era had just that hitting like that. And hit hard. And so I would imitate that, that, that harder part of hitting. And I, man, I got really pretty good at it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you know. The I, era of it of the pop locking turned into the members only jackets with the white mm -hmm. tuxedo gloves with the right. suspenders hanging right. down. With the <laughs> I remember those, with, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we had <laughs> our members only, so we would go out, and man, I just, I we we used to go pop lock off the of Whittier at the Sundown Drive-in during the breaks of the drive-in. So everybody that was challenging each other in the San Gabriel Valley would actually go to that drive-in theater that was next to the roller drone okay. where they had the T-Birds doing roller derby. So we had a movie, we had a drive-in movie theater and we would we lived across the street, caddy corner to it. So we never paid. We were always jumping the fence to get in, walk down the railroad tracks and we were in there. And then you'd see hundreds of kids in there battling and popping. And I stood back and one night, <laughs> One night we went to the one one night I was already semi knew how to rap because I was already exposed to them from the military bases and, and doing that and Sloan he would go to he would go on his like I would go to LA with my family on vacation and he would go to Brooklyn, New York with his family on vacation and then they would come back, you know, and we'd come back and we'd share all this. And I remember when on um, one of the trips that Sloan came back, he had a little Boombox with him, and he's all peekaboo. Get this hook. I'm the coolest rapper you ever knew. I'm a rap, rap, rap. And I was like, man, we're in there in military academy. We're shining our shoes, and right. the song's doing. He, he's there you doing go. rap, but we yeah. didn't know what it was. We're not. Right. And then maybe about, maybe about, I want to say a month later, maybe thirty days, forty days later. You hear Steve Crosno turn on the radio, and like I said, we're stationed out there, White Sands. We're getting ready to leave the base. Like I said, we come back, and that was the record. Boom! I that, said a hip hop, the hippie, the hippie to the. Like, and, and, and that's and it. The record wouldn't end. Now you remember back then in that era in time, these rec songs and records were only going two and a half minutes, three minutes. So when they played Rapper's Delight on the radio. If you guys remember when it first first came on, they were playing the whole version. You know what the I mean? They come out and get it. And That's the right. Food That's right. No good. <laughs> <laughs> so the macaroni and soggy, the peas are mushed, and the chicken oh, tastes like wood. So we called each other, you know, like that. Right. And then right. <laughs> I can't understand how that record started playing in rotation on the radio from day in, day night. And we used to have that little cassette radio box. So, you know, you have to push record and play at the same That's time. right. That's <laughs> right. Wait for it to Grab come out. <laughs> put the PDK, put the That's song right. that you didn't want to, put the song you didn't want to erase and go and <laughs> grab it to the end and stop. Put oh, the man. Down. That's right, brother. You're giving me flashbacks. That's right. Get a little, hey, get the little pencil, remember, and put it inside. <laughs> Write it up a little and. Man, so hey, Ross, I had remember to, you had to punch the top of the cassette too, so nobody yeah, so could record stuff. over. That's yeah, right. Yeah, you had to put your, your things out. But and you, you know what? You until you knew your your cassette was thing. That's and right. like, man, that whole thing of I let my tape rock to my tape pop. That whole thing with Biggie, that and then, then you get it. Hey, and <laughs> if we're if you didn't want to lose those songs, because man, I had so much cool music. You yeah. get your you get going go in the house and get my sister or my 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 grandma's i get the fingernail polish and it was like glue you put fingernail polish on it on the little tip and put the thing uh, back together. see i wasn't hip to that one i'm not yeah i wasn't hip to that one brother okay oh but, man we you know, but let me ask you this frost during that time now 
you know, Frost is getting older. You, you know, you're, you're, you're teenage to, 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 to legal age right now. So now yeah. rap, writing rhymes, and, and now you're introduced to Sugar Hill Gang. It's now, now I have a beat. feeling, you know? How did the rap yeah. rhymes part come in? The rhymes came in because, man, if you remember that Sugar Hill record that Sylvia Robinson put out, she actually had a flip side with the instrumental and it said, wrap your own version. If you remember on the record itself, it said, wrap your own version. Mm -hmm. And so do you remember the little cassettes Well, I would play the record on there? And then mm -hmm. I had a little hand cassette here, that's the it. one that you would just slide yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. And that's how it. you recorded with that one. It either went up or right or left on the box. Okay. So you would rewind this way, forward that way, and record up. So man, I would sit there with that box with the thing and let the instrumentals of the of the records B sides come on, and then I would rap. I'm Kid Frost. I'm the uh, uh, you know what I mean? And it was it was a trip. And then it, it just started. Everything back then was more on West Coast rap, and we can't. We got to be totally honest. We were all on that hyperspace, fast rapping. You know, Egyptian lover. Egyptian, Egyptian lover. Yeah. 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 Egypt, the LA Dream Team. You know, mm -hmm. yes, we're here. The Dream Team is here. And I was already in the roller skating rinks and all that with these records. We were already doing all the pop blocking shows and all that. Mm -hmm but I seen too many poppers. And one day when I did one of them songs, I just, it was a Saturday afternoon and I went and I made my own cassette like I did off of the instrumental. And okay. I think it was, uh, it was another Sugar Hill record, but it wasn't, the, it wasn't uh, um, Rapper's Delight. Yeah. It was from Sequence, a okay. group from uh, Sugar Hill called Sequence. And on that record, we flipped it over and I started rapping on it. And man, I, I took that little box with me in the cassette and then I took it out on the streets of West Covina. And like I said, it was still diverse cultures and all that. And I had this homie magic, man, Dwayne Thomas. He was, he moved out with his parents out to Houston, but he was like, you know, I didn't understand about Mexicans don't hang out with blacks, blacks don't hang. I didn't understand none of that because I wasn't raised that way on these military bases. So I never had that segregation or separation in my head like that and and i'll be honest with you in a lot of ways i got a lot of flack from it from a lot of people because i would go hang out with everybody man i didn't see color lines back then and i i didn't and so i would be out there with my brothers in the park balling playing basketball chilling hanging out and then other other fools from other parts of the city would come in and try to act like you know they were tough and all that and then all of a sudden get whoop, whooped on by a little mexican kid and a, and a black <laughs> kid together and you get a, 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 a multicultural beatdown i got you right <laughs> that's we were called the west covina playboys wcp we, we thought we were a little click and a little <laughs> <laughs> Thing back there. But to me, it was just fun, man. We just had fun. We were going to backyard parties and dances and all that. Oh, and then, man. and then I, and then it, it, a, a big, a, a big major dispute between my stepfather and me happened over this. He did not want me to go into rapping and did not want me to go into dancing. He didn't see a future in it being 22 years in the military and just wasn't having it. He didn't support it. He didn't, He wasn't with it. He, he kept telling me this ain't going to amount to nothing. You know, still, still to this day, he still doesn't, even with 5 million, 5 million sold, the plaques, the, the gold records, the platinum records, he still doesn't I got you. Don't I got understand you. it. Just, okay. just be that old fashioned and six okay. terms of Vietnam and all that, you know. So, mm -hmm. wow. so anyway, like you said, I started getting into adulthood. So when that dispute came, my grandparents they lived in Big Rivera, right there on the corner of Whittier and Paramount. And I just, man, I didn't even have a suitcase, a car, a bag, or nothing. I got a hefty trash bag with my clothes in it, like Santa Claus, like a gift, <laughs> and got dropped off in front of my grandparents and they weren't even home at that time and not even realizing it and i sat on the porch and waited for him and i never i never left pico rivera after that in east l.a and 
that mm -hmm. was the birth of it. After that, I never looked back. I was yeah. blessed to meet Ice T. Right. In the 1983, and I put out my first record on Electro Beat Records, uh, coincide with Ice T on his label. My first record dropped in 1984. Wow! And right. I never, looked, I never looked back after that. I never let my parents influence on the music of what I wanted to do. I knew, I knew my destino. You know, in Spanish, your destiny. I knew my destino right off the bat. I knew so that, I that was the time right there, Frost. I mean, this story is so interesting, man, because it, it, it involves a whole thing, like you say, a whole menudo of life experiences, man, that yeah, makes up the menudo, Frost that we are, you know? Menudo and gumbo, that, menudo and gumbo just... Yeah, just collided. put it together. So you're there with grandma and grandpa. You're now living uh, there. And from what you just said, that was seems like the time of your life where the OG Kid Frost was born. That yeah, later. You remember, if you remember, it was almost the same as Chico and the Man, if you remember, that, because my grandma yeah. my grandma and grandpa had a, a, a back, uh, a camper trailer that they used to go camp. Yeah. Camp in. Both of my grandparents, they worked at J1 at the swap meet. My grandma sold palm trees, lemon trees, roses, and all that to hundreds of people who still to this day have their plants and their stuff in, in their yards and in their thing, my grand my grandparents would, would go and do landscape and build bikes, and the people that knew my grandparents and stuff that from that time knew the house we came from, and that's the thing, man. That my my grandma and my and my grandpa, rest in peace, um, Emilia Emanuel, accepted me one hundred percent for who I was and wow. and and pushed me to do the music. They gotcha. they seen something that I seen in it. And the thing, a lot of it over my stepdad not wanting me to do music was because my father was an accomplished musician. My oh. great grandma was an accomplished pianist who okay. they owned bars in downtown LA. And my grandma was the piano player that played in the can can bars that real fast with the can can dances right. with the girls right. and all that. So right. we had a we had a bar on Fourth Street, and my and my grandparents, my other grandparents, had a bar on First Street. So that's how the, the two families met, and that's how my dad and my mom met because my grandma, my grandma's gra on their side had the bar, and my grandpa on the other side, Chato, had the bar, and both of them were boxers actually in the Olympic Auditorium. Mm. One of the biggest riots, one of the biggest riots that went down at the Olympic Auditorium back then, because they were steel chairs. You would walk in and grab a steel chair, and they, you would sit down on those chairs, and um. My grandpa had a, my grandpa would leave Whittier Boulevard in no car and walk with his boxing gloves around his neck and walk down Olympic all the way to the Olympic Auditorium to box. So he'd leave mm -hmm. like in the morning with a cigar and a, you know, <laughs> just chewing a cigar and right walking on. all the way to go fight. Gotcha. He, gotcha. In his last fight that he had to quit, he got rabbit punched. I don't know if you know what a rabbit punch is, they hit you with an elbow. And it was a, it was a, it was a, this was probably the first time I seen blacks and Latinos, Mexicanos go full blast because they had a fighter from Compton. His name was Fisher Cook and Fisher Cook bullet, bullet punch, rabbit punch my grandpa on the jaw and mm -hmm. knocked me down and the bottles and the chairs and everything yeah. just started flying in the air. I was probably six seven years old and my grandma's covering us like that so we didn't get hit by chairs and yeah. we got out of it and got out of the thing had to wait for a bus to get us back during that time and man it was just people were trying to get at my grandpa and he was you know he had a big shiner from the bullet punch he took but uh. the mexicans and, the, and that was probably the first time that i learned about anything about segregation and separation between our our, our, yeah. our people could could happen but man we've survived all this bro all, all this, this man you know you. that's right that's right i mean you know and tribulations of this for a while bro that's right for brother. A while. and and you know what that's the whole thing of this positivity posse man and you know the, the emails i get frost and of the people who email there they'll, they'll just email say my positivity today is dot 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 
or they'll exactly. say, you know, I want to pass this positivity to, on to you, Brother Vic, that, 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 you know. So I know in, in our small way, brother, the, the positivity fire is burning, you know. And to hear stories like yours, the honesty, man, you know. And, and I'm sorry, because I, I know that I'd, I want to get into your journey now with, with the connection of starting with the ice cube, I mean, the ice tea, uh, ice cube situation that sets you up then. Uh, or, or was a foundation. I, w I wanted you to educate me and others on on the journey from Ice T on, man. From then, okay, so with Prod. All right. So we started doing, we started getting a little notoriety in the San Gabriel Valley right off the bat. We started okay. doing the backyard parties. I don't know if you guys remember the era of the the DJs and the backyard parties and <laughs> oh, you know yeah. we were, Oh yeah. I got it. I met George Calderon, who was one of the DJs from Tropical Music. And at that time, I wasn't even calling myself Kid Frost. I was calling myself Gemini for my Zodiac sign, uh, being under the Zodiac of, of Gemini. And that's mm -hmm. how I was coming out, like, you know, and started doing these these braggacious, hippity-hoppity <laughs> rhymes and stuff. Yeah. And I started getting hired to go to backyard parties everywhere. And we'd start maybe in Almani, drive to Lakewood, and I'd get $50 here, $50 for that show, $50 for that show. And by the end of the night, man, we'd hit three or four of them. I'd have a pocket full of money. And it, so it was never a point of us having to work at McDonald's or do that, because I did that, man. I, during that yeah. time and era, I worked at McDonald's, I worked at Pollo Loco, I worked in construction, I worked in, Man, I had a paper route. I did everything that I thought on the military base that was that would give me a thing to go out and actually go out there. And man, I I seen that it was way more harder than what I thought it was going to be. Right, man, right, right. I I started I like I said I met George Calderon, and one night George Calderon went to Hollywood, and somehow he met Ice T. They were DJing at a thing, and I wasn't with him. And George told him, hey, man, I know a rapper. I want to bring him. And the next morning, it was like that Friday night, the next morning, Saturday, George came and got me. Okay. And we went, we went straight to Ice T's house on Hollywood Boulevard. He had a house right across the street from Pioneer Chicken. Okay. And man, I, I, had, I had heard about Ice T from a record from, it was called Colin Madness on a 12 inch. So I knew who he was, rock, rock, y'all keep on. I knew who Ice was right off the bat. So when I went to meet him, he, he already had a record. And right there on, on cue, we, we get ready to walk in on 7th and Alvarado into the radio and here comes Ice T to the front door. And he ain't letting them C's in there at all. He's not letting rappers, dancers, none of that. You had to get through Ice T to get through. So Tracy, he, he sees me, we walk up with the homies, and they're pointing at me like, and he's like, he's the rapper? Like him, right? And I'm all, he's all, man, what, let me hear it, what you got? And so I start, I busted a rap on him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I think, uh, I said, uh, uh, man, I remember it too, man, I said, uh, um, I said, who is the, uh, I'm the I'm the rap devastated the rap royale the shepherd of the flock the innovator of style the punk in your rock one fresh off the block I'm a one man corporation so you better buy stock I'm not black I'm Hispanic just the rhyme mechanic put the boogie in your body there's no need to panic and he stops me in mid sentence right there off that verse and pulls me into the club <laughs> with him and he's all Yo, yo, what up in the place to be? Your boy Ice T and I. Let me bring my new homie out here, man. This kid Frost. Boom, and he just hands me the mic, and I just look around, and I'm all, who is the Prince of Power, the Deacon of Dance, the heir to the throne, the King of Romance, the Duke of Devastation, the Rapper Royale? Yeah, remember them raps back then, and that day was Cadence. Yeah, yeah. You had a spit in your <laughs> right audacious, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It was just like, I put the boogie in your body, there's no need to panic. The clothes I'm in, you'll see me in grin. I'm always surrounded by the flying in, and if it's not known yet, 
Let it be discovered. <laughs> when it comes to rapping, I got all the bases covered in the subject, object, place, or time. Take into consideration when I write my rhyme, if you don't believe. Really, and that's how I came out. That's, <laughs> that was my introduction to I C. That was a yeah. cool rap. That's what got me signed to Electro Beat on his level. He wow. seen something in me. And look at, look at Ice. He could have yeah. picked anybody. He yeah. had an rappers from Dr. Funkenstein mm -hmm. to Swab to Knights of the Turntable to the Soundmaster crew, which was started with Coolio, Billy Boy, and Spoonie C. Dub C was out there with us in the Knights of the Turntable. Then he, then he switched over and got, jumped in with with uh, low profile with with uh, a DJ Aladdin, bro. I'm telling you. There the you go. Right? <laughs> The art hey, you know what, man? You know what? I'm the elephant in the room of all this, man. I'm the almanac of this, bro. I, hey, I'll hey, tell wait, you. Man, that's, that's another first, thing why I'm so happy, time. man, that you are here, brother, because you're. I'm looking at the feed the come, that's coming up here, man. Young artists and, and, and especially like our hip-hop community around the world, man. This is some wisdom. This is some, this is some knowledge. This is some, you're taking us to school on a lot of, you know, the education, dope. man. And, but as far as like Ice-T, Ice -T, can then now, when did, so by Ice-T. But you gotta, when, you gotta really look at Ice's, you gotta okay, really go look ahead. at how Ice was. Because if you remember, even when he put together the syndicate, yeah. two rappers right. that he co-signed that he gave with right. that, with the, with the original rhyme syndicate, was me, Everlast. Mm -hmm. Everlast was a, a young, White white kid, a young, a young a young kid, and you can look at the people that he brought together and put and assembled. He seen something bigger in the picture than just grabbing rappers off the street. He gotcha. seen the different. He he already seen diverse cultures in the game. He's seen the poppers. He's seen the poppers were Latinos and the poppers. Some of the break dancers out of Puerto Rico and all that that came out, out of the Bronx and all that stuff were, were Latinos. So he never, ever put them color lines in, in the way of us either. And that was a beautiful thing for me to jump in right off the bat at that young age to get to hang out with Ice and them. And through that, I mean, I got to meet the Fat Boys, Run DMC, all those concerts like that. Because when they come in to do the shows, Run DMC and then, then they would call Ice. And back then, we didn't have cell phones and all that. Man, you'd get a message at grandma's house on the <laughs> landline. Remember? That's right. You had a, That's right. The <laughs> there you go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, we, it, it, it's not yeah. like now, man, where you have the accessibility. This is why I get mad at a lot of people, even to this day, that don't pick up or answer their phones because how the heck did we get word out back then with no no yeah. cell phones and none of that social media or none of that outlet, but everybody was at World on Wheels. Everybody was at the LA Sports Arena. Everybody okay. was at the Double Jabs Army shows. Everybody was at these K-8 events. You know what I mean? And it's different now. So when I see people that are there ignore me for days and I get back and I'm like, God, oh, you got a cell phone, you got... You got it right here on your hand, man. Pick up that thing. If I'm calling you, I'm not calling you to. I'm calling you for a real reason. For a reason. There you go. There you Ice go. Was dope, man. Ice was dope. When I first walked up to the steps of Ice T's apartment, on the outside of his door, not even going in yet, he had the the actual poster of Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator movie marquee on his front door. So you walked up <laughs> into Hollywood and that's the first thing you've seen. Right. So if you remember, my second record after Rough Cut was Terminator. Terminator, that's right. Record. It was from the influence of Ice-T, Kid Frost, Ice Cube, Coolio. Everybody in that genre of that time and era had to have that cold, coldness, that cold, those cold rhymes. And that's how it went from Gemini, and then it turned into I was one of the Evil Three MCs, and it was Evil Lee was our DJ, which was e was Evil it was Ern Gar Garcia, which they're dark and and black as this hat, but we were from Honduras, Mexico, speaking Spanish, <laughs> and that's ISIS, that's ISIS DJ to this day, DJ Evil Lee. 
Gotcha. Henry G. Henry G. Henry G. Garcia were the two brothers, and we were the Evil Three MCs. We are the evil. our first song. See, and this is the thing of the almanac and knowing where you came from and your origin. Uh, our right. first song. Uh, uh, Han G. See, I'm telling you guys. You guys know. Han, so Han G and, and Evil, and then it was it was us three. It was me, Han, and Ice. We were called the Evil Three, and we are the Evil Three MCs. I'm Kid Frost, Henry G, and I'm Ice T. We are the, <laughs> and we would have them cadence like that. New York, got you, got you. you know, right, hip hop, right. the origin of where it all came from, and we would go. Oh man, this is some fantastic, studio. some fantastic almanac. But brother, tell us now. Um, now with the so by this time, when the Easy E connection came in, the Ruthless Records uh, 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 connection began. Please fill us in on that one, man, because to a lot of us, that was huge, brother. Fifteen eighty K Day. That's how I met. That's how I first met Easy. I they tried to give me a DJ at K Day, and I got mad. And I was like, man, I was already with the likes of Tony G and Julio G. So I left. I left K Day on Alvarado. Went with my boy Mark. He had a, a family van. We we drove all the way to Almani to Cogswell, picked up Tony and brought him back. After that was the formation of us bringing Tony G from K-Day to K-Day became the form of the original K-Day Mix Masters. Man. Once the K-Day Mix Masters came in and we had a group of core bomb DJs and Tony was my DJ, somehow K-Day got the contract, 1580 AM got the contract with Church's Chicken and we started opening up all the church's chicken joints in LA and it wasn't an easy task some of yeah. the cities that we went in into in Watts and in in South Central were some knockout drag out throwing 40 ounce bottles at me and iced tea in the air and us doing the duck and diving back into the lemos to run and that was yeah. one thing and our camaraderie with us from the beginning and the origin of it were dope so like I said, we were out there opening up all these churches, chickens for Katie, and then plus doing the World on Wheels, doing all the Uncle Jam's Army events and all that. Right. I learned, I learned all my swagger, all my style, all my, all my game from Ice T. Ice T would come in, get on stage in a black tuxedo with the whole get down, with the corn cob pipe, with everything. And little by little, he would shed a piece of his suit off until he was in a muscle t-shirt and the gangster slaps with the thing with the lokes on, but he would do the transformation on stage as he did his rhymes and his raps. Mm -hmm. And then, man, I didn't have no money, dude. I was poor as all hell, man. I'm gonna tell you what I learned a lot about the game and style and all that from Ice-T. One time we were getting ready to go do a show. And like I said, I didn't have money like that. And he looked down at my tennis shoes and he just shook his head. And I'm all, what's up? <laughs> you are not going on stage with me with them shoes. He goes, man, I'm gonna teach you something right here. And he took me right there to Highland and Sunset. And I don't know if you remember, they had that sports store on yeah. the corner. Uh, remember they had the big <laughs> sports store? Yeah. He took, me in, he took me in there and he bought me a pair of shell top Adidas brand new. Check that. And I'm, all, I'm trying to put them on, and he's all, nope. He goes, don't put them on. He goes, nah. And I don't know if you remember, he had that song 409, <laughs> where he's telling you how to clean your tennis. Remember he had that song. <laughs> so he, so look what he did. Look what Ice, look what Ice does, man. Look what Ice did. Okay. Ice gets me. He makes me carry my box to brand, my new shoes. Uh -huh. And I got, I, we would have to bring our shoes, me, Han, and Evil, we got to bring our new shoes to the concert, to the show. Right before we took the steps to get on the stage, we would put on our brand new kicks. And then we'd get on stage and perform in front of everybody in our brand new shoes. As soon as you step off, off of the stage right there, Ice would make you actually take off your shoes, put them back in your box, wipe them down with 409 so that anything on the stage, any kind of marks or anything like that, you put them in your box and you put He's your shoes on and you'd walk in your regular tennis shoes. Right and on, that's, 
those that that etiquette of uh, of him showing us that of that b boy culture and all that stuff of being mm -hmm. crisp, clean, and staying fresh, fresh. I'm yeah. fresh. The word was fresh back then. I'm right, fresh. Right, 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 I'm fresh. Right, right, right. I'm fresh. <laughs> uh, are you fresh? I remember, man, and then I remember getting on the first People's Express for $99 with a sack lunch. And we're all getting on our first trip to fly out to New York with Ice-T. Gotcha. And those, those accolades and those things and the, the beginning of the origin of it with Iceman are the most beautiful memories that That's I have of this whole hip-hop game because every yeah. single one of us was in it for the music. Nobody knew the millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, you know driving up to the hill after the fact, Ice T, when I was already Kid Frost signed to Virgin with the big record deal, I'm gonna tell you to this day, even on the features that Ice has done or studio work in his big studio with the shark tanks and everything, Ice never gave me a bill. He never ever said, I want my points, my publishing. Mm -hmm. He never said anything like that. He never asked for one dollar from Frost ever. Go Still to this day, still to this day. Look at I that. Just, I just sent a package out with Hen G and them with Ice. If you go back and scroll down, on, even on my IG, you'll see Ice sporting my frost hats and all my stuff like that because we send the thing. And even to this day, bro, to this day, that man has never, ever done anything to my career or help me in any kind of way, but to elevate me and propel me to, if I call them right now with the new record that we're working on right now mm -hmm. and tell them, I want to go through on final level and put my record out on through your platform. Yeah. He'll, without no question, he'll, he'll take the record immediately. So, and man, you know what, brother, that just co-signs ever since, I always hear positivity about Brother Ice-T, ever since, from all the way in the, in the back, I mean, on and off stage, as just, a, you know, one of those souls, man, that, that, that real, that connected, give back, you know, kind of a cat. So what I'm co-signing on what you're saying, and take us to the ruthless record days now, brother. <laughs> Did you have to give a woo on the top? Or? Easy. He was once a thug from around the way. Easy had the vision, man. Easy knew what was going on. Easy was putting together Ruthless Latino way before Bad Boy Latino, way before Maybach Latino, way before any of these cats were around. Because, you know, Easy, the rise and fall of E was a, a lot different. And that's another one. That's another one who did not put the, the 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 barriers or the color lines in his in his thing you know what i mean yeah and and and, 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 and you don't believe it you can go back to the origin of him you know hey mr dope man you make me sick you so cracked to my sister now she's sick but if you mm -hmm. have from one of your drugs i'm putting in your culo a 38 slug <laughs> i mean he he's Got seen you. he's mm -hmm. seen how much the influence of of the cultures, there culture you go. Classes, That's the culture it. Classes, the low rider, the low rider yeah. community, and the low riders and the Chevy and Paulas that started coming in and filtering, cruising down the street in my six four. I mean, come on, he made he made a low rider famous off of his first inserts of coming out on record, man. And I was blessed to be part of all that from the beginning, from the KD days. Like I said, me and Tony would go down to Compton to DJ Unknown, Andre Manuel, master of the 808. And we'd be down there recording the K-Day shows with Dr. Dre, with Yella, Lonzo, with with Easy, with with uh, everybody would come in off the K-Day. Like I said, we were already in with K-Day. So Easy came in one time with a keyboard. I mean, it was like, <laughs> feet, nine feet long i had never seen anything like that and you just got a keyboard and a little hey man what's up man we're gonna go in here and do this and they're all pulling out their stopwatches and tony's all you know with a cigar cuban from new york i don't need a stopwatch and me and him were on time and just busting the freestyle raps and they were tripping out on how we went in there and we walked in there and in 30 minutes we would lay our k-day pieces down and walk right out and then one day on the out we're walking out easy was the one that was talking to me and he's all man if you ever get anything really going i'm gonna hook you up with mccola 
at that time, McCola Records was doing all the pressing and all their stuff over there with McCola, mm -hmm. rest in peace. And McCola was actually pressing everybody's vinyl back then, Egyptian Lover, all the wax and all that, uh, uh, World Class Wrecking Crew, all these records, Bobby Jimmy and the Critters, remember all that? Oh, well, yeah, you, you're giving the history, man. That's it. Of all these groups that started right. coming out. And so, man, you know, once you start really getting in and intertwining people, even in that era, like I said, and you got to understand, man, it, it wasn't in the time of social media and right. we didn't have these out, we didn't right. have these outlets and all these, yeah. these things like we do now to screenshot yourself or film yourself mm -hmm. and look what I'm doing and self promotion yeah. and all that. So everything out there in LA at that time was word of mouth and it was yeah. getting to, to really be the word of mouth. So, during that time, Easy's career takes off. They they get in, NWA is blowing up, and then you started hearing a little bit of the problems and the inner core problems of going on. And we started hearing Cube was gonna actually walk on his own. We had already known that Cube was from another clique anyway. They had brought him in. He was from CIA. He was from another whole clique on the other side, but he was dope. He was yeah. dope. He was the writer. He was dope. He had more input than the other ones. So they snatched him out of CIA, put him into NWA. And back then, like it was, so how did they go from a group CIA, which was already the first part of the group, and then turn it to, you know what I mean? Gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. The homies with that attitude. The homies with that right, attitude. Right. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, I can dig it, brother. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what, Frost? You brought up a really and 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 man, your story is so it's full of history, it's full of realism, that it's no way we can condense this in an hour show, man. I I would love to be able to, but before we get out of here, man, I definitely want to bring up something that I heard you talk about in an interview that really touched me. Uh, and gave me more insight of why so many of us respect the, the man that you are outside of what we see on stage and here on the records. When you talked about how important it is to remember what your art or what your lyrics, what your music, not you specifically, but any artist gives to the world, especially our younger generation of how that can be taken as I remember you gave a story that when you went um, and you were visiting the, I don't know whether it was a penitentiary or county, but you saw tattoos of your work on, on chest, yes. you know? Could you yes. fill that in, brother? But that was, that was pretty heavy, man. Yeah, um, actually, you know, to see some of the things or some of the stuff that people came up to, there, there's a lot of things in my, in my career and stuff that I'm, I'm really not proud of. Proud of. And if I could take it back, and that's the influences and the the words of talking about um, some of the some of the things that I that I touched on subjects of glorifying glorifying the actual gangs and the street street gangs. You know, I I was in the I was actually going and doing some speaking, and uh, I had done this for a while, man, and and, and I'm still the controversy of a lot of the stuff of the, of the black and brown unity and all that, that we are really trying to really get into the penal system to really go in and try to talk to some of the, some of the younger ones to really change their ideology, man. A lot of these kids that are in there committing these crimes, you got to understand that they do it out of, uh, out of trying to get a name for themselves and trying to be braggadocious. And so was I, while I was walking into one of the pens, um, this guy pulled down his shirt and he had both of uh, the Smile Now Dilator faces from the album cover that Tunes Art had done on there. And he had it on his on his chest tatted and he w comes by in uh, earshot of me and he says, man, we, you know, we used to do drive-bys to your music. We used to do, you know, come out and do do different drive-bys to, to your songs and stuff. And, you know, I was like, man, that that's one thing that, I, I I don't condone and never will condone, and that's racial genocide, the killing of our own, the, the our own people killing each other. We have a bad enough time in our systems being oppressed, where people are out there already stereotyping us for a certain image and a certain look, 
but not knowing the depth of your knowledge of where you came from or your background or anything like that, man. I was in getting these tattoos and putting this and, and doing all of this on me way before anybody was acknowledging it. And you, even from the, from you see that, that's open heart surgery. That's the, I got the, the zipper from the zipper club. I had a nine and a half hour surgery. Um, it was important for the people to send a photographer to come in there and not mess with my actual cross on my neck. So they came in with a thing. And if you notice, they sliced and cut around my tattoo and did the, the my zipper. Wow. Right there. So, but yeah. Brother you Frost, you had, you had an open heart surgery. Uh, and I know, I do know that, man. But I know that you were also battling cancer for a while. So yeah, both yeah these, for a while. I, mean, I, um, I caught a rare bile duct cancer, man, and had to have uh, um, my gallbladder removed, a piece of my liver cut out, and wow. I had to actually, man, it took me a long time to get my stomach and my insides and organs back, but uh, I'm an advocate for very powerful full-spectrum CBD because, you know, everybody has an intercannabinoid system in their body, everybody, everybody has it, but if you don't take care of it and don't bring it up, man. Yeah. If, you, if you really address your inner cannabinoid system with CBD, you can actually flush and push cells that are cancerous and stuff like that through your body. And I'm, I'm actual real living proof of that. See that. Brother Frost, man, I mean. And, and CBD don't get you too high. There's a misconception there about go, CBD yeah. and THC. And that's one thing that you really have to understand that there are two different things. And, and the CBD, it's a very strong, 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 strong CBD that can address cancer cells, but it has to be full spectrum, the whole plant. It cannot right. be edibles, it cannot yeah. be a cookie, it cannot mm -hmm. be any of that. You have to really have a very strong full spectrum oil. And if you lose your bones and your body and your things, your body's gonna repel do your intercannabinoid system, you're gonna stop, man. I don't know if you've ever seen how oil hits water and you see all the bluish colors. Yeah. And the, yeah. the, mm -hmm. there. Oh. Man, when I started getting these cancer cells out of my body and when you go through that and you start pushing these cells through your body, man, that's exactly what I've seen that, that was just coming out and coming through me, man. And I actually seen the cancer, you know what I mean, actually come oh. out. And, uh, thank God, man, I have not had to address ever since they cut it, cut it out and went in with the surgery and did, did all that. And the crazy part about that surgery is they did that surgery all through my belly button, through my umbilical, through everything right. I went inside right. that way. Yeah. So it was a, it was a, it was a crazy healing process and a crazy thing. But through, Brother that, Frost, through, that, you... through that, I started the Kid Frost Diabetes Awareness Foundation. Okay. So I got a, I got a foundation that I'm putting together that we've been actually doing the youth walks. And before this, we already had two walks with the kids to empower them. Um, we, our model for the Kid Frost Diabetes Awareness Foundation is for kids to go outside for one hour a day and play, put down the devices and get out there and start doing positive things. And we did the 1K walk already. We're, we're getting ready to do the 1K and 2K walk at Lake Lake with the kids. And it's right. great, man see the parents come out and learn learn uh, and, and be get 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 aware and get get really on the same page of uh learning how to start eating a little bit different exactly. man sure that we're getting mm -hmm. our raw vegetables and enough of our stuff in, inside us man you can hashtag kid for us diabetes awareness foundation and if there's anybody out there that want to really know know about us um, we got a Na one NASA astronaut lady. Her name is Yolanda Kagan. You can go Google her name. She's an Af Afro American astronaut from NASA, and she is the only doctor able to perform surgery in outer space. Come so on. She can go up to these platforms and do that. And you can Google Yolanda Kagan, Dr. Yolanda Kagan, and you can see that she's, she's going to be one of our main people. Wow. For Diabetes Awareness Foundation because she knows too that we have to go in now and reprogram these kids eating this mm -hmm. pandemic and this this epidemic this thing of, that we're going through 
you got to realize that for these months, kept these kids inside the house. And sad to say, a lot of them were eating very, very unhealthy during yeah. this time of this uh, coronavirus. Yeah. And so we really got to we really got to go back now and, and structure the way our kids are actually eating and growing. A uh, perfect example is, uh, where's Rhythm? Rhythm. Come here. Rhythm. My son Rhythm. <laughs> Melina, right. he, my son Rhythm Melina, he turned 14, but I just, okay. he, he's, uh, he's my poster child for me, really keeping a uh, healthy, come over okay. and say hi to everybody on Facebook Live. Look at my little Justin. My Brother Justin Rhythm. Jesus. How you doing, I've man? I've <laughs> had this boy since he was three and a half months on my own. Oh this man, is right on, Frost. He's gonna be totally right like on, man. I'm looking for the book writer and the writer right now to help me with his story. A oh, rhythm actually man. rhythm actually during the care of his mom at three and a half months, he got his skull shattered from the front lobe all the oh. way to the back. And I had to go through the Ed, Edward Algerman child court and hire Ashton Kirscher and Demi Moore's family attorney, Victor Cohen. And uh, $45,000 later, I ended up raising my boy on my own and um, with no reunification with his mom or anything. His mom has been in prison ever since. So we, we've actually gone through the whole 14 years of his mom actually being in, in prison. So I had to go through the child development classes at St. Rose Dominican, and I actually became mom in that hiatus of my career. <laughs> And from from that, yeah. that time that he was born in in, in uh, 2006, mm -hmm. actually uh, put my whole music and everything on hold for a long time because yeah. I became a mom mixing formulas. Um, he was born premature, born uh, four and four and a half pounds. And to see him now, look at him. He's yeah, got one, yeah. Got one green eye, one hazel eye. This boy is <laughs> he's amazing. <laughs> You can only and you know what, Frost? I'm going to tell you that is a um, that is a perfect lead way into Happy Father's Day to you, brother. Happy Father's yes. Day, man. Yes. You know, and and I have to tell you, Frost, I would it would be an honor, man, if to 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 try to reschedule to have you come back, man. And and come talk on, to us some more, on. please. There's you know, because I would love to do. Because I'm seeing these these everything lining up here, man. People are being educated. People are throwing up, you know, thank yous, man, from around the world. It's it, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, you know, before Brother Frost does it, before his screen goes out, I, I just want to tell you, Frost, much respect, brother. Much respect for your journey. Much respect for your honesty. Um, much respect, brother, for keeping that positivity alive, not just through your own family, but how you reach out, how you've reached out today, but how you reach out in your everyday life, brother. That's the positivity posse, man. And uh, please yep. come back, y'all. Will you come back and see us sometime again, Brother Frost? You got it, Victor. You got it, man. Right Anytime on, man. you need to get on, man. I, it, it was great, man. And, and thank, thank you for giving me a platform to actually come out and clear the air on a lot of things. I mean, people hear about, you know, he's a rapper or they're a rapper. But like I said, they don't really know what you what the trials and tribulations and the rigors that you've gone through right. through life to get you to point A to point B, man. And man, shout out to the Victor Brooks show. Oh, you know brother. I mean? Thank I you. Man. Definitely will come back. Definitely, Ross. Oh, um, brother. I think we lost audio on Brother Frost. Hello. Can you hear me? There you go. You're back. Yeah. I think. yeah. yeah. Shout out oh. to all the dads out there that are making it happen, man, during these trying times with their families and stuff. Man, I know it's hard out there, man, and we're going through this, through this, through this coronavirus thing and, and trying to get out of this this with our with with our lives man there's, yeah. you know, there's a lot of things that we're seeing and a lot of things that are going down man don't don't believe a lot of the hype that you are man and the knowledge that you attain from all this man is from through reading and through acquiring from different different areas man go find out what's going on in china go find out what's going on in iran and all these other places where they're saying they're hot beds and hot hot spots with this virus and if i can leave you with one last thing is yes take care of yourselves man mentally physically and spiritually make sure that you're grounded and connected to everything that's going on man no know, know what's going on man because these these could be man I'm, I'm telling you man a lot of this that's getting played out right now is 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 uh we're not seeing 
is a lot of the things that are going on behind the scenes of this virus, um, this, this so-called uh, ethnic cleansing that they're that, that they think they're doing to all of us to rid you know it's, it's almost like a survival of the fittest and only the strong of, of us are gonna are gonna survive but that mental strongness and strength a lot of it is is, is based right here it's, come on now. The there you right go here. so you really really hey. gotta exercise that part of it man think think you I know what you. hey y'all y'all heard it straight from brother frost himself the one and only og kid frost frost himself but um you know what you all we 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 were definitely uh um uh granted a a a privilege today and i don't know if i'm on camera or off camera right now but uh we're gonna this whole uh <laughs> this whole uh wi-fi thing is interesting uh, yeah but i lost you i lost your screen i lost your Hello. Hello. Yeah. There we go. I'm Are back. All right. So yeah. ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us here at the Victor Brooks show Facebook live quarantine series. You know, today was uh, today was another fantastic day full of positivity, full of a, of, of a, of a person's journey uh, of their life uh, that once again surrounds it with artistry but also brings the, the ups and downs through this person's life of, of personal bouts of racism, personal bouts of, 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 of making their way. Uh, we've heard his story today, Brother Frost's story of heart surgery, of, of his bout of cancer, uh, but we also heard the positivity of keeping, keeping his positivity through his children, uh, who we had the honor to meet his youngest son today. Also, big shouts to Scoop DeVille, his, his, his older son, and a massive producer and writer in his own right. Um, and we just want you to take it with you, you know? You're gonna hear so many varied stories when you stop in at the Victor Brooks Show uh, Facebook Live Quarantine Series. You're gonna hear stories of artistry. You're gonna hear stories of, of maybe of social political realm, of spirituality, you know? But the main thing that we hope you walk away with is something that pulls at your positive stream for you to continue to keep on keeping on, y'all. Keep dreaming. Keep creating. And my younger artists out there, do it, y'all. Give us those songs. Write those films. Write those poems. Um, uh, express yourself like Charles Wright in 103rd Street told us a long time ago, but it's still prevalent today. It's express yourself. Positivity Posse, join us here every Saturday and Sunday at 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock. And also over on the Victor Brooks Show uh, Positivity Posse page. Every Friday we do the Positivity Posse on Instagram. Also follow us on YouTube. Go to the YouTube channel, press subscribe, click the ones you like. I hope you like all of them, but whatever it is, stay with it, stay connected. I love you. And uh, Father's Day is, is, is here tomorrow. And um, it's going to be an honor to welcome my father tomorrow. Uh, I couldn't I didn't feel any other fitting way but to bring my father on for Father's Day to, to have you kind of help experience and understand his journey, the man that he is, of why I love and respect this man so much. And God knew what he was doing when he put me uh, as the son of Victor Brooks Sr. Uh, come join us tomorrow, y'all, at 11 a.m. Uh, it's the only difference in time. We're doing it a little early because of the time difference and being Father's Day. 11 a.m. Pacific tomorrow, Victor Brooks Show Quarantine Series Facebook Live, my father, Victor Brooks Sr., and come back at 3 o'clock today because we're going to have what I consider one of my favorite singers ever, and you'll see why. His name is Chris Willis. He's going to be here at 3 o'clock and just uh, within the hour. Come on back, the Victor Brooks Show, Facebook Live Quarantine Series. We'll see you next time.